I said. I don't know if I even got that right. Or differed, whatever it is in Welsh. But there you go. The other changes to the programme is the 500 sidecars, because we're now down to, I think we're down to six chairs, I understand that the heats are going to be merged. So uh, I hope they know that on the pit gate. 500 sidecars, I understand the heats have been merged. So on the line for race one. Race one, the 250s. Got eight of them gone out there. I can see Phil Ranson in second place. I'm not sure who's actually leading. They caught me by surprise. Phil Ranson dropping back a bit. Looks like it might be Adrian Squirrel has moved up there into third place. Possibly the Number 33, actually, eight. Number 33 in front. That's Richard Smith. Change of levers from last year has caught me out. Richard Smith in front, tremendous drive in the national finals last year. Number 32, Adrian Squirrel next. Third place is number 7, Chris Norris on the 250 BSI, a little bit wide there. Behind him is Phil Ranson. Phil Ranson won't think much of that with Chris Norris is on his old 250 BSI and uh, leaving the Mako behind, but Chris Norris is absolutely flying on that today. Quite a big track, so it's quite a disadvantage power-wise. Same CC, but an older style bike. Chris Norris on the 250 BSA in third place. Fourth is number 25, which is Dee Harrison. Dean Harrison in fourth, Phil Ranson in fifth. Richard Smith powered away, he didn't make the gate, but he's away from it, he pulled out a big lead. Richard Smith wins, and look at this, the 250 BSA. Driven by Chris Norris in second place, followed by Dean Harrison, Phil Ranson, Roy Leake. Number 22 is Gary Brown. And by number only, because they are on the line for race two. 33, 7, 25, 6, 12, 22 and 31. I'll repeat that once more. 33, 7, 25, 6, 12, 22 and 31. The time for that was 1 minute 26 seconds, and for the first race of the day, speed 50.5 miles per hour. I'd anticipate that that will get up somewhere near 55 before the end of the day, possibly even pushing 60, but we'll wait and see on that. So on the line for race two, got Gary Wells in this one. Scott Nichols number 16, I would have thought, would be somewhere in the results. And in fact, Scott Nichols and 62, Steve Sire is out there. Scott Nichols on the inside. Steve Sartre on the outside, Scott Nichols pulls away. Scott Nichols who rides it switch speedway, as many riders here today have had a little crack at speedway. Scott Nichols, I think he's uh, not sure of his age, he's only about 16 or 17 years old, but a uh, very bright future for him, both in grass track and speedway. His father Tom supplying the uh, spares for us today. In the pits, I think I can see number 70 Gary Wells in fourth place. <laughs> Number 16, Scott Nichols, commanding lead. 62, Steve Sorrett. Number 34, I think he missed that full corner completely. He's demolished a bit of the track, but it looks like he's got a lever hanging from his uh, handlebars. That's number 34. You have a look when he goes around, Matt Thompson. You look at his right hand, it looks like there's a lever broke. It seems to be hanging from his handlebars, number 34. But number 70, Gary Wells, has gone up inside him anyway on that bend. Scott Nichols still in the lead, yet yeah, 34 has got his... Must be his front brake lever just dangling from the handlebars there. Looks like we'll have a bit of course rebuilding after this one on this straight. He certainly missed the bend, but a fine win there for number 16, Scott Nichols. Well done, Scott. 62, Steve Sartre takes second place. Third place is going to go to number 70, Gary Wells. Fight for four between number 74 and number 34. I think number 74 just got that, Mark Powell. We'll have to wait and see for that one. Very quiet for race two, 250 cc's. First number, we're doing that by number number only because it's so much quicker for you all. Number 16, 62, 70, 74, 34, 183, 71, 
262 and number 99. That was 1 minute 24 and 1 fifth seconds, 51.6 miles per hour. Just run through that all for you again very quickly. 16, 62, 70, 74, 34, 183, 71, 262 and 99. I know that he has made full recovery from that. He did spend have a time in hospital and uh, the time with the collar on, but he has made a full recovery. He has unfortunately been advised not to race again. But uh, he is here today, and he was also here yesterday helping put the track up. In fact, uh, he nearly nearly drank some tadpoles yesterday, funny enough. Uh, some tadpoles were brought over for Fiona Strachan, who's uh, with Steve Todd in the chair today. And these little tadpoles were in a water bottle, and uh, after they were digging the holes for the toilets, Darren thought it was a bit hot, so uh, he didn't want a coffee, he thought he'd have a cold drink, so he's grabbed the bottle open the top and he's actually got it to his lips and suddenly everybody said no don't drink that whatever not he said so i said well, there's tadpoles in there and he thought he was joking until he looked and he realized there's uh, six tadpoles in a bottle of water but uh, fortunately the tadpoles are safe and well i'm sure down stomach is better than what it would have been as well so uh, We've used a bit of common sense. It's better racing with six in a race. Do I say six? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, there is six. I thought there was eight there for a minute. But uh, there's plenty of plenty of space on the start line and up the straights. It's been uh, set out to allow for up to eight side cars. So here we go. This is Fiona Strachan's first ever ride. Number two with Steve Todd. Fiona Strachan, solicitor in London. It's her first ever ride. She's on the inside of the gate. The inside of the track, number two, Steve Todd, so don't expect too much from it. It's a first ever ride, and the whole way. But in front is number 32, which I believe is Malcolm Goodwin. Oh, and we've got one of them gone completely wide and gone out right wide into the ropes out. The race has been stopped. I think it's basically in case they need St John's help. The race has been stopped, so St John's, you can cross the track, it is safe to do so. I need the riders for rope five. The ambulance is off the track, so the ambulance is rope side, so we can actually get on with that rather than cause a further delay. So, uh, on to the two valve race, we're jumping about, certainly fooling me, but oh, it's a nice little wheelie there from number 69, Mark Ramsey, managed to control it. Oh, the sound of the thud as they go past here. But it's number 119 that's gone out in front. That's Simon Richardson with the stripy red uh, trousers. It might look dangerous for the ambulance up there, but it is off the track. It's the other side of the road. It's not on the racing line at all. Completely safe to carry on with the meeting there. Simon Richardson nearly overdoes it there. Well, 262, Jack Walker in second place. Third is 186, John Murray. Then 71, Arthur Livings. Simon Richardson pulling away from these. I believe he's under Jower Power. Certainly guys, no, he's had to ride a two valve. I think we'll put him in a 500 if he's going that quick. We can't have anybody going that quick in the two valves. It's supposed to be for retired grass trackers. And number 561 also going around there in the two valves. Andy Kerrison, I think he's got Duncan Tollhurst leathers on. I had to double check that. I thought, oh, I thought Duncan Tollhurst was doing 1,000 chairs now, but... Uh, Number 561, I think he's got Duncan Tollhurst on his, uh, on his leathers. But uh, there you go. Anyway, Simon Richardson, he's pulled out a complete straight lead over the second place man. 119, Simon Richardson wins. Very good ride from him, 262. Jack Walker from Chesham. A ride on the two valve and picking up the second place. Third is number 561. Andy Kerrison, followed by Arthur Livings, 118 Darren Bartram, and 101 Ian Offer. 186 John Murray, is he going to push up the hill or is he not? My experience of racing in two valves, it's uh, for that little distance, it's worth the points, you never know. Points make prize money. To race three next, or well, race three and four merged. But the result of race five is first 119, followed by 262, 561, 
71, 118, 101 and 186. Time for that race was 1 minute 27 and 2 fifth seconds, an average speed of 49.7 miles per hour. Four that emerged on the basis there were six outfits before and one passenger or driver is, I believe, currently uh, having a rest in the ambulance. I should think we're only down to five. If my counting is correct, it is five, I see. So, Fiona Strachan, she only had one lap on her first race and uh, perhaps they were saving it for the proper one. Here they go. Number four out in front, followed by number 30, 78. And number two, Steve Todd, taking it steady for the first race with Fiona, and we've lost a passenger, we've lost a passenger on the first bend up there. I think, I don't know if it's going to stop, he's actually laying in the track. We have got a red flag, we have got a red flag, it has been stopped yet again. <laughs> right, here we go then, with race six. I have just heard from the car for the course, it was, oh, we've got a tape problem now, I don't believe this. But red flag, the tapes have gone up one side only. The ever-reliable Dunmo Starkgate didn't function on that occasion. <laughs> Having said that, uh, we understand the 1,000 sidecar Starkgate. There is a part that's missing which we can't locate. The bad news for that is we are down to a flag start on that, but that little bit of chain on there is a bit of um, almost uh, rear wheel chain on the mechanism there. And if that chain is pushed in and it's tight, the solenoid is not quite powerful enough to pull it if it's pulling against itself. So providing there's a little bit of play in that chain, a little wobble on the end and then you're okay. So here we go then, with a rerun. Oh, and somebody's broke the tape. This time, I can't believe this, there should be an exclusion for that. Red flag again. Somebody's broken the tapes. It was stated prior to practice and prior to racing that if anybody breaks the tape, if we can actually find out who it was, then they will be excluded. So I wait to find out who it was. Certainly somebody must be the guilty party. The sand is still on the start gate, so I don't know what's actually happening. Thank you. I think 190 has been uh, pushed off of there and been told. It's amazing when you get a short race program about 32 races you never get any incidents at all but if you increase your race program to 45 then this is what happens John Burrows is ready with his red, red flag on the finish line this time after so many uh, situations where he's had to jump in the track he's got it at the ready this time in case anything goes wrong we must be uh, we must be nearing it I should think if not some more people are going to want some fuel in a minute so uh, Somebody uh, can't get started down there. It looks like number one John Dorm actually couldn't get started. The other thing is they're all in grid position today, which obviously complicates matters as well because they've all got to be in the right grid before they're allowed to go because it is an Eastern Centre Championship. The green flag is ready. Yes, we're away. Now we've got the problem of getting them all around the first bend. Now it's 15 nil scopes up there, 139 I think is... Uh, I think that might be David Mears up there, 139. Number one, Duncan... No, it's not Duncan, sorry, it's uh, number one up there, it's a yellow leg, fourth place. It's gone a little bit wider. 110, Stephen Dorr storming around the outside. There's 15 Neil Scopes has got the lead. 110, Stephen Dorr. And 139, David Mears. Neil Scopes leaving Steve, leaving Stephen Dorr. Oh, having a big laugh around there, but he's probably what he doesn't come too wide here. We've had somebody come to grief on the bottom bend, but I think he's off of the racing line. We've got a yellow flag out there. He's back on the bike, but uh, he's got going again. Number 332. Mr. Durrell, dropped it on that bottom bend. Stephen Durrell is getting closer and closer to Neil Scopes. He's right on his back wheel now. He's going to take the outside line on the top bend. And they were riding a very steady line around there, but Stephen Dorr going wide. Is he overdone it or not? But Neil's back in front. They're coming around towards the checkered flag. Is two pack Morgan going to get in the way? Oh, it's going to be neck and neck. I think it's Neil, is it? Oh, I don't know. 
I don't know. Extremely close. The black markers were getting closer and closer to him. Very close position there as well with John Dormer just leading another bunch of three. So a very tough time for lap scores there. Still a super race in the 350s. So we had one or two starts, but it was well worth waiting for. 332 Nick Irwin coming round to finish his race after Javin dropped it. 213 coming round. Finish it. It looks like the other rider is not going to make it. I mean, the lap score is tent about that, but they all agreed on it. As a result, first, number 15, Neil Scopes. <laughs> Very close. Second, number 110, Stephen Dorr. Then third, 139, 9, 175, 1, 231 and 261, 332 and 213. Certainly 231 and 261 were extremely close as well, but 231 just got it. The 231 was in seventh, 261 in eighth. Time for that race, race six was one minute 20 and two fifth seconds. Average speed has jumped up to 54.1 miles per hour. I'm sure it will continue to increase as the grass comes off. But we're into the rerun of race three and four. I think this is the third time of asking. I've actually lost count, but fortunately we've still got uh, four chairs in this one. Beard and James Croft, followed by number 78, Lionel Cox. Number 7, Dave Carter from Preston. And 2, Steve Toll. You're not supposed to be talking, you're not supposed to be chatting up, Fiona, as you go up the straight. You're supposed to be getting on with the racing. You're sitting there having a chat to as they go up the straight. So, number 4, Simon Beard and James Croft, leading from number 78, Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Followed by number 7, David and Nigel Carter come all the way from Preston to be with us here today. And bringing up the rear. At the moment, Steve Todd and Fiona Strachan. First ever ride for you, Fiona, on the 500 chair. Steve Todd, obviously a very experienced driver, has been around the grass tanks for 20 years or more. But uh, certainly looking after his passenger, which you need to do, until they get the hang of it all. And it looks like they're going to be lapped. But that's... Uh, I can remember on my first racing days, I got lapped. In fact, I think I was still getting lapped when I finished, but never mind. <laughs> Number four, Simon Beard wins that one from 78, Lana Cox and Grace Hagen. Nice to see them leaving a nice wide berth for Steve and Fiona. It's nothing worse than uh, somebody coming giving you a belt on your first first race meeting. You're struggling keeping the bike going as it is without anybody coming and giving you a nudge. Yeah, so we call this race three, to, for reasons of consistency, if nothing else. First, number four. Second number 78, third number 7, and fourth number 2. The time for that one was 1 minute 28 and 1 fifth seconds, average speed of 49.2 miles per hour. The next race when he's going up the straight, but Steve Todd has jumped in the chair. I understand that Fred Field isn't in the chair today. I understand that Lee Bass is going to have a go in the chair. This will be Lee Bass's first ever ride at Grass Track. So Steve Todd, a brave man, taking on two new passengers. Steve Todd going to drive the 1000 chair, he's just ridden the 500, I hope he remembers it goes the opposite way around. Uh, Lee Bass in the chair, Lee Bass who's done uh, motocross this year, and uh, got some good results in motocross. Steve's persuaded him to have a go at grass track, that's as I understand it, I haven't heard any different. Very, very strange going out on a left-hand chair and then a right-hand chair in two consecutive races, but there you go. CC side cars, it's a flag start. Watch the man with the straw hat on the inside of the circuit. He's the man with the Union Jack. It's currently on the floor. When he raises it, they'll go. And if any rider goes before it's raised, they'll be excluded. So they were all, as I understand it, very good that time. I can't quite see very well from here, but everybody behaves themselves. Flag starts are very fair. It's only those people that take advantage, and those people, if I spotted today, We'll end up, they'll finish the race, but they won't be in the results, no point. So, here we go. See Steve Todd there, one from the back. Penny Hook, number 34, I didn't get all the numbers as they come by. But uh, we've got Steve Ford, six, we've got 7,000 chairs in this race. Not 7,000, 
1,000 to 7, 1,000 chance in this race. Struggling to get the number plate of the leading one, it's number 11, Justin Peach, followed by number 12, Tim Bennett. Can't quite get the third one, I think it might be, I'm not sure, number 7, day 3, I think it's the third place, but uh, we'll check that when they come around again. But the leader is still number 11, Justin Peach, followed by number 12 is Tim Bennett, followed by number 7, it's not a very good number 7 actually on that one, but uh, he's in third place, followed by 34, Penny Hook. Behind that was the James Rogers, young lad on there, James Rogers, having a crack round, but Steve Todd's experience gets him by up that straight there. You can learn a lot of Steve. Check a flag out, same positions, number seven, Dave Green. He really needs a uh, little bit of white tape on the top of that seven. It looks very much like a one from a lap score, so uh, if any of Dave Green's helpers can hear me, you need a little bit of white tape on the top of that seven. We can't quite read it as a seven from the lap scorer's caravan. Looks to do an extra slow lap for safety. It is uh, absolutely too dangerous to try and stop on that pit bend and actually get in the uh, track track exit. So we've said to him, if you're quite happy to do another lap, providing it's slow, you do a slowing down lap and be on the safe side. Anyway, the result of race seven was first, number 11, Justin Peach. Second, number 12, Third number seven, fourth number thirty-four, fifth number two, sixth number four, and seventh, although seventh isn't shown in your programme, seventh is number twenty-six. The time for that race, race seven, was one minute twenty and three fifths, time of fifty-one point two miles an hour. If anybody says that can't be right because it was a similar time to last time, don't forget that the thousand chairs do a different distance to the solos. The solos do four and a quarter laps, and the thousand chairs do three and three quarter laps. That's the different distance are covering, even though they're doing it in roughly the same time. And the second heat with a thousand chairs. So I'm going to say, yeah, they were very good the first time on there. No rollies forward, but. Uh, Obviously that's relying on everybody's clutch freeing nicely. Unfortunately it is on a slight downhill there, but uh, nothing much we can do about that. Or they should go, then the race will continue, but they will be excluded. And they're all right. Nasty little bump there as they come off of that. Uh, but again, uh, what grass tank's all about, learning to ride the field and the track that's set out. If you want to go and see a smooth track, then you go to Speedway or Long Track on the continent. Uh, number 74 is out in front. That's Duncan Toller, who we were talking about earlier. He used to be a very, very good 500cc solo rider. I understand he came in as a reserve last week down at High Holden in Kent to Masters qualifying. Qualify. And I believe he succeeded in qualifying as well. So 74, Duncan Toller in front, followed by 101, Gavin Newlin. And I think it might be 81 John Stafford in third place, if my uh, memory serves me right, of the clothing they wear. Certainly uh, Stuart Darrell in the next position down in those very distinctive yellow leathers. I think all riders ought to be, able to be made to keep the same leathers year after year. It makes it a lot easier for the commentator. Doesn't matter if they fall apart, but there you go. Jim Evans bringing up the rear, they had a wheel collapse on them at the uh, meeting at White Cone some weeks ago, but uh, number 74, Duncan Tullis wins from 101. Oh, they have lost the passenger, I think uh, Stafford has lost his passenger off of there, so I've got up there. I'm not sure whether the lap scorer's got to check on this, because I believe to be class to finish here, you must be crossing the line with your passenger. So uh, unless he comes around and picks him up and jumps on, if he does that, then I think he might get a qualifying as a last place. So uh, obviously I've got to check that with the lap scores, but I believe that is the case. You must carry your passenger across the line in order to uh, be classed as a finisher. So uh, if he wants to get back on, he'll be as a finisher. If not, I don't think he will. Put your crash helmet back on and just jump back on and go over the line. Last place is better than no place at all, but it's very unfortunate having done all the work and to get within 25 yards of the finishing line and uh, then drop off the back. But uh, 
We'll have to wait and see what that scores think of that. That's my belief of it, but uh, they'll be experts. Yeah, because the Staffords didn't go across the line together, or John Stafford didn't take his passenger across, um, didn't count as a place for him that, uh, when he did. He ends up in fifth place. But uh, anyway, fine win then for 74, Duncan Tollers. Second, 101. Third, 271. Fourth, 47. And fifth, 81. Time was 1 minute 23 and 4 fifth seconds. Average speed of 49.2 miles per hour. At 74, 101, 271, 47, 81, 123 and 4 fifths. 49.2 miles an hour. And we're into the first of the 500 cc solo heats. And it looks like a full field on there. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 500 solos. Power into the first bend. I can, okay, the only one I can recognise there at the moment is Mitchell Godden, I think, who's in fourth place with the body colour. And it looks like somebody up the inside of him. Number 16, Scott Nichols from number 15, Neil Scopes. And I think that might be Jason Wilby in third place, if that's number 65. Mitchell Godden in fourth. Cracking race, but they've been side by side now for nearly two laps. Neil Scopes and Scott Nichols. Scott Nichols on slightly in front there, but Neil won't give up. Third place, I'm wrong. It's number 30 in third place. I'm telling you wrong. I thought it was 65, Jason Wilby. It's number 30. Malcolm Simmons, the speedway man. Thank you. If you look at his distinctive style of riding, you can see that's Malcolm Simmons, very tall man. Malcolm Simmons, the ex Kings Lynn, Paul, and whatever speedway rider in third place. Just ahead of number three, Chris Tritton, and behind him is Mitchell Gott. Certainly a star study field he's got in this race, and thank the whole entry is very good today. A win there for Scott Nichols, his second win of the day. 15 nil Scopes is second. Race for third, it's number 14, Chris Tritton, just ahead of number 30, Malcolm Simmons. Mitchell Gordon also there. 28, Graham Buckle. 25, just going across there. Harrison, 5, Russell Miles. 11 is Lee Garrett. Number 15, nil Scopes. Third, number 14 is Chris Tritton. Followed by fourth, number 30, Malcolm Simmons. Fifth was number nine, followed by two, 28, 25, five and 11. What sort of speed we got for this? One minute, 17 and three fifth seconds. Fastest time of the day so far, up to 56 miles per hour. I still hold good with my prediction. I reckon we will top 60 by the end of the day. But, uh, we're getting that way. Anyway, I'll just run through that very quickly. 16, 15, 14, 30, nine, two, 28, 25, 5 and 11. And away for race number 10. 44, Peter Finch in front there, if I recall, by his number without looking at the... Uh, Program 44 is Peter Finch, 72 Kevin Teague, who I would expect to be up there somewhere. So 55 Jason will be, I would have thought, would have been in the leading pack. It's 44 Peter, 72 Kevin Teague in front there, 51 is Nathan Morden, 73 Julian Phipps is there. Can't see Jason will be out there, number 65. I know he's here today, but uh, with his other problem perhaps. But, uh, 72 Kevin Teague, another Ipswich Speedway man. Trying his hand at grass. 44 Peter Finch, 51 Nathan Morton, 73. Julian Phipps followed by 41. Jed Rolfe, Jed the Spread as they call him. 101 Ian Offer coming up there. And bringing up the rear at the moment is 42. Ian Harden. 72 Kevin Teague enters his start of his last lap. 44 Peter Finch. Julian Phipps in front of Nathan Morton now. Last couple are getting a bit spread out here, but uh, 72 Kevin Teague has uh, pulled out a foul lead. 72 Kevin Teague are coming round for the check of flag. Teague wins, followed by Finch, Phipps, Nathan Morton, and Jed the spread roll. Believe in mechanics for uh, Ben Harry Speedway. 100 cc. First number 72 Kevin Teague. Second number 44 Peter Finch. 
third, number 73, Julian Phipps. Fourth was 51, followed by 41, 101 and 42. Time for that one was 1 minute 22 and 3 fifth seconds. Time of 52.6 miles per hour. So 72, 44, 73, 51, 41, 101 and 42. 1 minute 22 and 3 fifth seconds. 52.6 miles per hour. On to the third race of 500 solos, a superb entry here today. It's the, one of the best entries we've had for a long, long time. There's uh, no meeting in Kent here, to, no meeting in Kent today, so a lot of the Kent boys have come up to us. We've also got the Kent left-handers, which you've yet to see. And locally it's the cack-handers, because they go around against all odds, the opposite way round, with the sidecar on the inside. Anyway, they're off 110, Stephen Dorr, followed by 87, Ben Howe. And I think that's in third place. That looks a bit like Keith Potts Leathers. And also 122 Graham Brown. Uh, he's up there in fifth place. Being taken a little bit wide up the top there. 110. Stephen Dorr often rides on the continent these days. He's a good rider. He's in great demand on the continent. They'll pay him big money to go and ride because of his spectacular style of riding. He also has some spectacular falls. Let's hope he stays on today. Very rarely you see Stephen go out in front and then ease off. He's a flat out rider most of the time. Sometimes to his detriment, but 87 Ben Howe is up there in second, followed by Keith Potts. I've missed the other rider, but Graham Brown is the next one along there. Burton's pulling out a big, big lead here. Stephen Dawes got to avoid the other riders in between two riders. One stop, the other one's still circulating. 110 Stephen Dawes. Absolutely phenomenal lead. The other rider, which I couldn't grab there earlier on, was. 1676, one, I believe. In fact, I think it's, uh, we're not sure about that number. We'll come back to that. 110 Stephen Dorr wins, there's no doubt about that. A long, long wait before we wait for the next ride. In fact, it's number eight. Oh, 122, 175, and 87, followed by 176, all in quick succession there. So 176 is, in fact, Adrian Phipps. I was a bit unsure about that, but uh, quite a close finish there for uh, second, third and fourth places. You see sidecars are coming on the line, locally known as Cackanders. We'll see some fun when they go out. The passenger hangs right out over the wheel. Looks absolutely leery, but before that we'll give you the race result of race 11. Cackanders. First, 110 Stephen Dorr. Second, right on the line, 122 Graham Brown from 175 Keith Potts and 87 Ben Howe. Then 176, 117, 112, 561, 185. Time for that was 1 minute 18 and 1 fifth seconds, 55.6 miles per hour. So just run for that once more, 110, 122, 175, 87, 176, 117, 112, 561, 185, 1 minute 18 and 1 fifth, 55.6 miles per hour. Looks like we've got a non starter in this. Somebody pushing in there. The 1000C left handers, traditionally from Kent, but we've got one or two invaders from Wales, so let's see how they get on. See the passenger sits over the brake to start with, and then suddenly it's bum over the back wheel and hope the back wheel doesn't come up in the air, because if it does, you've got big problems. The driver either has to turn sharp right or all got to overtake straight away. The sidecar wheel goes flying up in the air as he overtakes there, number four. Going around now on two wheels as he went in the side that bend. There we go. It looks like we've actually had a collapsed back wheel, I think, or a tyre has broken, one of them. Back wheel has collapsed, so he got some problem on that one on the top bend. He's pulled out. There's the number four. Did you just see that? Sidecar wheel just lifting off the ground as they come around the corner. Not the most comfortable position in the world for the sidecar passengers, but pretty spectacular all the same. The closer the ground you get, the faster it seems. So number four in front. That's Neil Owen. In fact, that's the Welsh wizard and he's had a problem. He's packed up. He had a big lead and he's packed up. So number nine takes the lead. 
Bob Gear in lead, number four, Neil Owen, come all the way from Wales. They call him the Welsh Wizard because uh, he came from Wales and uh, took the Kent left-handers to pieces with his riding and uh, he did a fat ride in about a 6.10 jowl, everything else is 1,000 cc, but he's hit some problem today. In fact, we've had two withdrawals from that race. I hope they're not permanent. But number nine wins. Followed by... 60, K. Bovis. Followed by, in third place, number 66. I believe 68, in fact, my eyes are deceiving me. So there you go, we'll come back to the result of that in a minute. 12, first number 9, second number 60, third number 68. The time for that was 1 minute 39 and 1 fifth seconds, average speed of 43.8 miles an hour. You might think that's rather slow, but uh, considering they're going the opposite way around to what they would normally do with the sidecar on that side, that is why they don't get round quite as quick. And uh, Tony Penfold also. Neil Cuff, very good rider. 151 in this one is Graham Hilton. 217, Philip Davis. Let's see, I think we've got four on the line from what I can see. All have happened to have drawn the inside grid, so they're all on the inside of the start gate. And they're ready, about to go. Leave that tape alone. And they're away. And who is it? It's 125 gets the drop. 125. Tony Penfold in front. And how do they get on on the first bend? All fairly well bunched together. There's Tony Penfold in front, pulling out a bit of a lead as they go up the hill. A change of position, although in second place he's gone a bit wide. So I think he can get away with it. 126 0 cut, followed by. 151, Graham Hilton. Tony Penfold still holding out in front, but uh, you watch the second place man, he seems to grab a bit of extra power up there to get close, but uh, he's certainly closing on him. Perhaps next lap he'll have him. If he can keep the sidecar wheel on the ground, that is, of course. The 125 Tony Penfold. Green up the rear at the moment is 123 Billy Penfold. Penfolds. In fact, there's been a change of position in the first place. Tony Penfold has dropped back to second place. We thought we'd leave it to that straight up there, but in fact, he's sneaked by. I was watching uh, Billy at the back. Coming around to start their last lap. Here they go. The battle at the front and the battle at the back. The trouble is, which one do you watch? I think the one at the back looks more interesting at the moment, slightly closer. Tony Penfold dropping back a little bit. Sidecar will generally stay on the ground at the moment, but he does pop up occasionally. Fine win there for Neil Cuff. Tony Penfold, a close one here. One, oh, one, five, one, I think. I'm not sure, quite close. Graham Hilton and Bill Penfold having a battle right to the line. One, two, six, Neil Cuff. Second, one, two, five, Tony Penfold. Third, one, five, one. And fourth, one, two, three. Time for that was 1 minute 39 and 2 fifth seconds, an average speed of 43.7 miles per hour. Want to know what's happening in the rugby? Put your hand up. None. So, oh, oh, it's two people. Well, it's very close actually. It was about two and two. Somebody's saying that, uh, <laughs> I won't tell you what's happening, but from what I can make out, I don't think you want to know what's happening in the rugby. I'll come back to that in a minute. Anyway, we're back to the 250s on race 14. You can see the bright green leathers, I think, of Phil Ranson in fourth place, but I didn't get the uh, lead as he went by. I think Gary Wells is up there in third place. There. 62, Steve Sire. Followed by 70, Gary Wells. 34, got a bike problem there. Number six, Phil Ranson has gone through. 62, Steve Sight pulled out a very big lead over Gary Wells. Steve Sight, one of our top 250 boys in the Eastern Centre. 70 is Gary Wells, 6 is Phil Ranson. Number 74 is in fourth place. That's Mark Powell. 34 has got a bike problem.
problem. He's lost a great amount of grain with his sword out. He seems to get going again now, so he might pull a few places back. Steve Tyler starts his last lap. Number 70, Gary Wells. 60, Phil Ranson going up there. 12, Roy Leake in there. 22, he's Gary Brown. comes round to take the checker flag. I'm loath to say he wins, but he's gone over the line. You never know what happens in grass track. Suddenly Gary Wells takes it. I think Phil Renton just got that from 74, but it's quite tight. Quote on the rugby. I know what the score is now, the current score, but things can change anyway. Those, I'm only looking at those people opposite me. On the back straighter, hands up if you want to know what the current rugby score is. Oh, it's New Zealand, thank you saying that. There we go then, we're away for race 15. I'm aware I haven't given you the result for race 14. We'll come back to that. Got carried away with the rugby. We're on to race 15, solo 250. How is that old BSA of Chris Norris is going this time? Number seven. That's old BSA. One of the original British guy. BSA stands for British Small Arms, made in Birmingham. Not doing so well this time, Chris. He's having a go at half the livings. He's back in sixth place this time, Chris Norris on the BSA. You know it's the BSA because you can hear it come round. Good job we ain't got a noise test here today. A little bit noisy than some of the others. But I'm not doing a uh, few credits to our leader, 16, Scott Nichols at the moment, followed by number 33, Richard Smith. Two very top riders there. Richard Smith was well up in the uh, national championships last year, so uh, Scott Nichols leading him here by uh, two or four points, I think. So, uh, What's Scott going to do in the national championships this year then? Certainly Richard, uh, no mean feat at the moment. A little bit wide on that one. The back wheel just clipped the marker, but... Uh, Scott Nichols taking a rest, having a look behind, making sure he don't make a mistake on the finish line. Followed by 33 Richard Smith. Number 99, I believe, is the back marker. Followed by 183, 25, 7, Chris Norris. I think Arthur Living's just got in front of him then. Mark of the course did issue a warning that time to Richard Smith. He clipped the marker up here with his back wheel and that marker went into another one so it looked worse than what it was. But uh, if you do run outside the markers, you will get excluded. But uh, he's right on the verge of that. So if any of Richard's helpers can hear me, a warning to Richard Smith regarding... Uh, Riding wide on this uh, finish line straight. He's got away without an exclusion, but it was touch and go. Anyway, back to race 14. The result of race 14. The rugby can wait. I don't think it's very important, actually, from what I'm hearing. Race 14, the result. First, 62, Steve Syrett. Second, at number 70, Gary Wells. Third, number 6, followed by 74, 12, 34 and 22. Time for that was 1 minute 26, an average speed of 50.5. That's 62, 76, 74, 12, 34 and 22. 1 minute 26, speed of 50.5. On to race 15 immediately. First number 16, Scott Nichols, followed by 33, 183, 25, 71, 7 and 99. The time for that one, 1 minute 22 and 2 fifths. Average speed of 52.8. So 16, 33, 183, 25, 71, 7 and 99. 1 minute 22 and 2 fifths, 52.8. The 500 side cars are on the line. Second ride for Fiona Strachan with Steve Todd, number two. I hope he ain't got two consecutive rides this time. No, he wouldn't do actually. It was only because it was a rerun anyway. Oh, in fact, the chair lifted a bit there with Steve and Fiona on it, but he eased off. Looks like a somewhat uh, smoky old Steve Todd. I understand for the rugby we've got some points on the board. Anyway, Steve Todd, no, Steve Todd in last place, I thought the red levers is number four in first place. Simon Beard followed very closely by Lionel Cox and Grace Hagen. Third place is... Third place is number seven, the Carters from Preston. But oh, he nearly lost his passenger there. I don't know if the passenger's in his right place. No, he hit a bump. He nearly lost his passenger there. Number four, Simon Beard, as he went over the top of the hill there, the passenger jumped out of the chair and he had to grab back and 
Lauren will ease off a little bit rather than taking advantage in case the passenger fell out. He could have easily got by, but if the passenger have fell out, he'd have run over him, so he very sportsy backed off rather than run over him. But uh, obviously a little bit on the bumpy side for the 500 shares. A lot of these have got no rear suspension at all, so it does get a little bit ripply. And to actually hang on, going around the corner and then hanging on the straight, you just catch a little bump that you didn't know was there and you can so easily be off, as we saw with Darren Todd last year, but we've got no change of position. Please don't hit Steve and Fiona as you go by them. First number four, second number 78. Unfortunately, Lionel couldn't really have a crack on the last bend because of Steve Todd, but uh, one of the things of racing, I suppose, really, when you go up to there, sometimes you uh, intend to do it on the last corner and somebody's in your way, but uh, there you go. Third place is the Carters, and Steve Todd just coming around. Mind him, Lionel, where are you going? Oh, he has managed to miss him. Here we go, then. Pull at 16, cross out race 17 in your program, so it's been merged with 16. First number 4, second number 78, third number 7, and fourth number 2. Time for that race was 1 minute 28, an average speed of 49.4 miles an hour per hour. So I'll just go over that again, 4, 78, 7, and 2. 1 minute 28, 49.4. I think Lionel was well disappointed with his uh, last bend there, but he should have seen Steve Todd in front of him as he actually came up the straight. So uh, one of those things in racing, if you actually get balked by a back marker, but uh, there you go. Sometimes it works to your advantage, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, I think Lionel was going to have an attack on the leader, Simon Beard, that time, but it didn't come off. Anyway, the latest in the rugby is that we've got three points. And the New Zealanders. It's the New Zealanders, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, I'll tell you how many they've got in a minute. We'll just do this race first. Here we go then, with the solo two valves. 118 Simon Richardson from 262 Jack Walker. And in third place is Arthur Livings. The distinctive green leathers of Arthur. Arthur Livings been riding grass track for many a year. I don't know what he's on today, but uh, he's got several bikes, and they ride the Bolt on the not quite sure what he's got going around there today. He's got blue plates on it anyway, so it must be a 350. Those with the yellow plates and the black numbers are 500cc. Those with the blue plates and the white numbers are only 350cc, so a slight disadvantage in this. But if you're a good rider, you can soon overcome that. Simon Richardson, and he, as he did in his first ride, pulling out quite a big lead over 262 Jack Walker, 71 Arthur Livings in third place on his 350. 561, smoking well. We shall have the environmental people after us away, that's smoking. Gives them something to do, doesn't it? The environmental people come down and have a look at something smoking. But 119 Simon Richardson out in front. 262 Jack Walker coming under pressure from Arthur Livings. I think Arthur's going to get him. Arthur's going around the outside, coming into that top corner. Will he manage to do it on the last lap? He's a little bit of short power up the straight, but is he going to use his track fast in his experience? 119 Simon Richardson wins. Can Arthur Livings sneak up the inside of 262 Jack Walker? No, it's got to be the outside run. Not quite, just the bike, half a bike's wheel behind. 186 John Murray just coming over the finish line. A bit of a battle here between 89 and 561, but I think it's 561. The chap with the Duncan Tollhurst leathers. Coming up so quickly, he can't give you all the details. First, the result of race 18, the solo two valve. First, 119. Second, 262. Third, 71. Fourth, 186. Followed by 561, 69, 118, and 101. Time for that was 1 minute 25 and 4 fifth seconds, an average speed of 50.7 miles per hour. Now on the line now for race 19, the 350s. Full grid of this, I think there might be 13 on now, I think, actually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I can see 11 for sure. Revs rise, so hope we have a nice clean start. I think we have a lot of the front wheels rearing there, so beginning to get some ruts there now. So 175, Keith Fox followed by 15, Neil Scopes in the front. 
very similar leather styles, but uh, Keith Potts is on the outside, but somebody's gone around the outside of Keith Potts, so it's Neil Scopes in front. Keith Potts is third, I think that's Stephen Dorr in fourth. What did come around? I hope he does come around, I hope he doesn't come into the caravan. 139, David Mears is also up there. Neil Scopes followed by David Mears, Keith Potts, and Stephen Dorr is back in the fourth place, but back up to third. Gone a little bit wide there, he's back in the fourth. Stephen Dorr, he doesn't actually shut off when he comes over the top of that hill, everybody else shuts off, he's gone in the third place, I think he's going to come up in the second, he's changed his line, he was on the wide line and suddenly kicked back the line, gone up the inside and he's gone from fourth to second in one bend, but Neil Scopes has pulled out quite a lead on him, I don't know whether he's going to be able to pull that back. Certainly the game line, he's got a clear track in front of him now for a while, Stephen Dorr, look at the dust coming out, you wouldn't believe it with the amount of rain we had here yesterday. But there's a little bit of dust, let's hope it doesn't get too much because we don't have to support our racing here today. But Neil Scope, Stephen Dorr closing on him. Coming up to the check of flags. He's still determined to win it. I hope he don't go inside the mark because he has turned the bike. He really didn't make an attempt to, to win and he did make an attempt to stay in the market as well. So Mitchell Godin also made an attempt to win but I don't know on that. But uh, certainly Stephen Dorr did attempt to stay in the markers. I know he did clip them but... Uh, Certainly fairly uh, exciting finish to that. 15, Neil Scopes, followed by 110, Stephen Dorr. Next came 139, 175, 231, 9, 1, 261, 190, 332 and 213. The time for that was 1 minute 20 and 1 fifth seconds. Average speed of 54.2 miles an hour. Thousand chairs, flag start. What's the man in the straw hat? Just give you that result very quickly. I don't think they're all quite ready yet. 15, 110, 139, 175, 231, 9, 1, 261, 190, 332, and 213. 1 minute 20 and 1 fifth seconds, 54.2 miles per hour. towards the line. We've got in this one Steve Todd and Lee Bass, Pete and Jim Evans, James Rogers, Duncan Tullis, John Stafford, Justin Feet, Stuart Darvell and all way. And I think it's number seven, Dave Green, that might be in front there, I believe. Stuart Darvell, he's in fourth place, going backwards quite rapidly. Steve Todd coming up to catch him. I'd expect Duncan Tollers to be around here somewhere, but uh, in fact it's number 11 in front, followed by 74, which is Duncan Tollers. So it's Justin Peach in front, followed by Duncan Tollers. Stuart Darvell has uh, dropped back to last place. He was flying in practice, but obviously hit some problem. And I think, no, we haven't had a change of leadership yet. Duncan Tollers going around the outside of number 11, Justin Peach, changed his line, stays up the inside. Oh, looks very leery there. I thought he was going to go in the side of him, but he managed to miss him. He's actually lost a little bit of ground there, Duncan Tollers, because he's made himself the inside line and uh, Justin Peach where he wanted to be at the same time. So he had to back off a bit. But Justin Peach followed by Duncan Toller. It's a cracking race, this one. It's uh, Duncan sticking with the inside line, but he's going to actually change his tactics on the last lap, which sometimes happens, just to fool everybody. Justin Peach pops a wheelie as he goes up the hill there. Justin Peach still in front. Duncan Toller having to go in the outside this time. Has he tried it? Oh, not quite, not quite. He did change his tactic for that last spin, but didn't quite make it. Stafford in third place, followed by number four, Steve Todd, well up there in uh, fifth place, followed by Pete Jim Evans and Stuart Darvell. Surprisingly, uh, at the back there, he's probably got some sort of bike problem. You'd expect him to see up the field a bit better than that. Better. Than that. Somebody scored again, but it ain't us. Race 20, 1,000 cc sidecars. First, number 11, Justin Peach. Second, number 74, Duncan Tolhurst. Third, number 81. Fourth, number 4, followed by 2, 47 and 271. Time for that was 1 minute 21, 50.9 miles per hour. Let's go over that again. 11, 74, 81, 4, 2, 47 and 271. 
1 minute 21, 50.9 miles per hour. 55.3 first half. And it's not to England either. There we go then. Race 21, 1,000cc sidecars. 2, 4, 5 obviously. I think very, very good on the... Uh, Consider it's a flag start, and they're usually the worst to start anyway, but uh, I think they know they're going to get excluded. So there's 101 in front, with some very bright letters, I should know his name by now, Gavin Newlin and Simon Wall. And second place is number 12, Tim Bennett. He's got a good place in the first one. And third place, I think, is Dave Green. I hope he's uh, got a little bit of white tape on his number, so we can see there's a 7 there rather than a 1 from the lap scorers. So 101, Gavin Newlin. Followed by number 12, and then followed by number 7, Dave Green, and number 34, Penelope Hook, and Pete Bluto Watt. Yeah. Penny's having quite a go here, actually, to try and get third place against Dave Green. Very much uh, evenly matched, these two. In fact, I think she's done it. She's kind of powered into that bench. She's gone right the way around Dave Green. Well done, Penny. Next one to pick off is number 12. Right, the last lap, it looks, ooh, I thought he was going to get a change of leadership there, and Gavin Newlin slow going into that last bend. Jim Bennett closely up behind him in second. Penny Hook having a roll going the outside there. Number 34, but I think they finished in those positions. Oh, somebody, Dave Green has spun out there. Is it just him? Where's his passenger then? Is the passenger still on there? I think we need some St John's if you can hear me. His passenger's just running down. We missed that. We was watching the exciting uh, situation. The passenger's okay, but Dave Green has gone into centre green for, for safety purposes. So you have to turn right if you haven't got a passenger. And I think as the bike has spun, it's kicked him off. And I think he caught his leg somewhere on the bike as he come off. His passenger has just done the fastest 50 yards ever seen at grass track to see where he is. He is moving about. I think it might be his, uh, his foot. It's a foot, St John's. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> On the line for a race 22. And now away, I can see number 9, Mitchell Gordon's got a good start. 51, Nathan Morton. 72, Kevin Teague. And 73, Julian Phipps up there. I think it might be Mitchell Godden that's in front. He is indeed. I think he's already on one warning for going wide, so he wants to uh, watch himself this time. Number nine, Mitchell Godden leads. What's their markers, Mitchell? 73, Julian Phipps also up there. Five, Russell Miles further back. But uh, certainly very close up the front there. Mitchell Godden has temporarily lost the lead. I think he's back a neck and neck up into that bend. We've got on the inside, 72 Kevin Seeger, the Seaway man, on the outside. 72 Kevin Seeger's pulled in front. Ben Hell, also a Speedway man, it's Rich Speedway man in third place. In fact, Ben Hell's now having a, having a go at Mitchell Godden. I think Ben Hell is going to get by. No, they're not. They're going to go into that bend neck and neck. 72 Kevin Seeger in front, and Ben Hell has also got by Mitchell Godden. Mitchell Godden had a very good start, but he's not giving up. And Ben Hill coming around the side of Kevin Teague, I believe. Is he? Oh, it's old, old Ipswich Speedway against New. But, oh, 72, Kevin Teague took him a little bit wide. I don't think that was Ben's fault. He ended up outside the market. In fact, I think his motor seized or a puncher. The back wheel doesn't go around. He had a problem just as he came to the line. I thought Kevin had taken him a bit wide, but just as he got to the line, Ben Hill had a problem. Let's hope that he's not a permanent problem. We'll see him again later. Super race, but fortunately he's survived. He stayed on the bike when the back wheel seized. 21 was 101, 12, 34 and 26. A time for race 21 was 1 minute 24 and 4 fifths, 48.6 miles per hour. Uh, run over that again, 101, 12, 34 and 26. 1 minute 24 and 4 fifths. Speed 48.6 miles per hour. Race 22. First was number 72, Kevin Teager, followed by 87, 9, 2, 73, 51, 25, 5, 11, and 5, 6, 1. Time for that one was 1 minute 22, 53 miles per hour. So that's 72.
82, 87, 9, 2, 73, 51, 25, 5, 11, and 5, 6, 1. 1 minute 22, 53.53 miles per hour exactly. And they're on the line for race 23. I understand Dave Green has gone into the ambulance. I think they're just going to check him over. I don't think it's anything too serious. Let's hope not. But uh, better to be checked over thoroughly. Race 23, solo 500. Slightly lower than before. Race 22, I think Chris Tritton is up there in second place, I believe. Judging by the leathers, he was up in second place, he's now in the third, he's Neil Scope's gone into second, but number 16, Scott Nichols in front. 44, Peter Finch is in fourth place, followed by 41, Jed and Spread Rolf. So 16, Scott Nichols. I believe he's been unbeaten all day today, I think this is his third ride. Uh, absolutely unbeaten. Neil Scope's gone very wide there. Chris Tritton's coming in the caravan. I think, no, he's not. Oh, block, but he's coming in the caravan. Neil Scope's had a problem, and Chris Tritton was forced to go wide. He had no choice. I thought he was coming in the caravan. I thought, I thought I'd announce his name wrong or something, but uh, certainly a scary moment there. 16 Scott Nichols enters his last lap. Number 14, Chris Tritton in second place. Neil Scope's holding third. Despite that problem, I wouldn't have thought Chris Tritton would have been penalised for that. He was lucky to get through the gap, actually. Scott Nichols eased off. Make sure we don't muddle him up with a back marker. 16 Scott Nichols wins. 14 Chris Tritton second. Having a look back at Neil Scope, saying, what the hell are you playing at? But I don't think it was Neil's fault. I think Neil had some sort of problem with his bike or misfire. And uh, suddenly lost power, took him wide, and Chris Tritton was committed to the outside, but fortunately we didn't have any ropes and stakes to replace. Begin to get exciting now. Race 22 was the numbers only. 72, 87, 9, 2, 73, 51, 25, 5, 11, 5, 6, 1. That was the result of race 22. On to race 23, 16, first number 16, Scott Nichols. Followed by 14, 15, 44, 41 and 101. The time for that one was 1 minute 21 and 3 fifths. Speed of 53.3 miles per hour. So I'll just repeat race 23 again. 16, 14, 15, 44, 41, 101. 1 minute 21 and 3 fifths. And... The speed for that one was 53.3 miles per hour.